So of course. When we have a full moon, that means it's opposing the sun at the same degree as you can see this 8, 8.30, whatever, 8.30, whatever. But um, we have the opposition for a full moon. Now, what's happening with this is the moon is in Taurus and the sun's in Scorpio. So the moon's energy is a very feminine energy and so is Taurus. This energy is really trying to make us get in touch with our emotions, our subconscious, but at the same time kind of pulling up from the Taurus perspective, like what brings us comfort, what brings me, what brings me, what brings um, pleasure, like enjoying the five senses, really getting grounded in this energy. Now, with it opposing the Scorpio sun, which is supposed to be our heart, our inner child, fun, but it can also be our ego, our insecurity, it's like Scorpio is pretty much making us just jump straight into this energy of like, you know, what's going on with our ego and what's going on with our heart. It's like making us dive because it's literally the one that goes in and has to dig out all the information, all the unknowns, let me pull it out. So with the sun shining on that, it kind of makes that Taurus energy a little uncomfortable because it's like, hey, I'm kind of calm over here in the dark and I'm growing right now. So that's what creates this tension that we see with an opposition between the moon and the sun here. But we also have this lovely conjunction, literally like less than, <laughs> less than a degree. So this is a very powerful conjunction here at the time of the full moon, which is gonna happen at 7.49. Saturday morning. Um, with this energy adding to the moon already of wanting to find your pleasures and comforts, this Uranus energy is like going to be just pushing it, especially opposite the moon here. It's going to be saying, like, seriously, what do you value? what like is very true to you like what is really your heart's desire here like no bullshit kind of energy and it's going to make you rip up anything that doesn't belong there and plus with it being conjunct the moon at so tight a degree more than likely there's going to be a lot of unexpected things happening with our subconscious whether <laughs> that is especially being on halloween and it being a blue moon having all this jam-packed energy in it, more than likely some of us are going to tap in the gifts we've never experienced, um, especially with this um, connecting to Scorpio. You can be trying different things for the first time, getting into the occult, um, really learning astrology, learning gifts in that perspective. Um, you could also be jumping head first into something you completely didn't expect like a freaking tower moment happening out of nowhere on the day of the full moon and you're just kind of like what the hell because this uprooting comfort and like trying to like replace it with truth right now is can be very painful and very annoying especially since there's two oppositions going to that sun but if you can work with it you can really create a physical as well as an emotional and subconscious environment that is very stable for yourself and very powerful especially with all these degrees being at the eight the eight is the number of saturn it's the number of karmic energy so this could also be a time for breaking karmic ties if you use this energy like that uprooting can literally be uprooting bad karma and just kicking it away because you're going to be able to work with the Saturn energy that if you work with it. For once, this thing, uh, yeah, for once, the sun and moon are not doing wonky crap down here to our beautiful three that have been buddies like all year long. I think this is the first moon so far. But, um,. Um, I'm going live until um, I'm done helping you guys, pretty much. I usually go for three to four hours. But um, with this right here,
Okay, I really gotta, like... Mr. Nightbot needs to, like, calm down here. And quit, like, telling people not to spam. I'll fix that. But, um... Anyways, like I was saying, because if I try to fix it now, it's going to pop up on my screen. With this energy also, if you have been putting in a lot of work to do exactly what this moon wants, what's going to happen is you're going to reap the rewards. So if you're really trying to manifest something or you're really trying to like break free of a cycle whatever it is if you've been working really hard at it that's the kind of energy that saturn rewards and it's actually going to help you through this process even though it'll probably be very painful now if we were to continue just kind of going around let's talk about our our lovely friend here um mars that's in retrograde still being um rude and hitting our our buddies over here and still causing the tension between having to uproot everything and making us feel like we're stuck and stagnant in it and drained or the opposite where we feel like we're just working our butts off to do it and we're completely wired and we can't sleep either way this energy is just keeping us very stuck in doing this it's like there's no way you can get away from it you're stuck in dealing with this energy and it's getting closer and closer to being conjunct with chiron over here it's like sneaking up on it so with this energy it's like this forced healing this forced uprooting this forced growth forced transformation forced lessons and this um, Saturn energy is going to be even more potent since we already have all this eight energy going on here. So, yeah, I know it's something with, um, I got to fix my bot. I just got that night bot and I have some things set up on it, but other things aren't set up yet. Like I've literally just started working with that this morning. But like I said, I have to go off my page here and fix it. And it's like, it'd be just a, a mess with that so I'll try to fix it a little bit once I'm done with this but um, like I was saying all those squares going from that we've been dealing with this energy we're just still gonna be dealing with this energy <laughs> it's just pretty much what it is and with this right here which you know obviously we're all sitting here like oh that's great like Mercury's retrograde and Libra not in Scorpio anymore, it's in Libra. This is starting to create squares as well. So even though Mercury is going into the sign where it's like finally maybe we can find some balance in certain relationships where there might have been a lot of crap going on and like we're not being able to communicate well. Why is our communication so funky? Why am I always so angry? Why is this not working? Why is all this deep crap coming up? Why can't I just make this harmonious for once? It's like you're finally starting to go retrograde in the sign where you can think about where you can put these aspects, but it's squaring off against all these. So it's pretty much making you sit there during this full moon and have to transform the way you think about relationships. Like you have to sit here, like how do relationships affect me on a spiritual level? How are they like, like affecting me on a deep emotional level? How are they affecting the structure in my life? Do they hold major authority over me or do I hold authority over my own life no matter what the relationship is? There's just like all of this thinking you're having to sit there and do with this moon because it's just going to hit pretty heavy, especially since this Mercury is the exact degree of the Saturn um, right here. So that is really going to hit on if someone if some of you are in karmic relationships this is going to be something where your mind cannot stop thinking about it and it's going to be like you have to make a decision like do you want to keep this karmic relationship in your life or do you want to do the work it takes to move yourself out of it and uproot what isn't serving you anymore because this is directly connected 
to the Saturn energy, just like this moon is. Like, this is like uprooting what doesn't truly bring you joy in your life, as well as uprooting anything that takes away from your own self-value. So if there's relationships doing that, you're not going to be able to escape the um, information coming to you here. It could be like one of the things that pop up unexpectedly is like you get the big like flag that flies in your face like I can't do this anymore. And um, Oh, hey, Bay, how are you doing? But um, that's pretty much going to be a lot coming up with this Mercury here that people probably aren't going to be expecting. Just for the fact that it's going to hit that hard because these energies are very intertwined with each other. Now, we have this energy here with this sextile and it actually is hitting all three of these it's barely um hitting this one but it's still an eight board so we have neptune doing this sextile over here to our three planets so the way i'm looking at this is that instead of trying since it's a sextile it's supposed to help us make it a little easier do not go off and start drinking and doing things to escape your problems at this moon. More than likely that it might help you get past the moon, but then you're still going to be dealing with all the days afterwards, especially a hangover. But what this can really help with is actually getting to the point where you're starting to learn that loving aspect that Pisces can bring. Because we're supposed to in this 12th house Pisces Neptune energy it's like learning that unconditional love because it's so close to the spiritual realm it's as close as humans can really get to that love so being able to learn that and give it to yourself throughout this transformation here because all this is very deep and expansive is really going to help you because this is also doing this um, sun trine here being able to do that for yourself, for your heart, and to help you heal ego wounds is going to help bolster your growth as opposed to feeling like really bogged down because of this Aries retrograde, because of this Mercury retrograde, because of Aries retrograde, because of the Mars retrograde. It's really going to be able to help with kind of like almost providing a cushion for that without feeling like you're dropping. But one thing to be very careful of is just to that whole escapism feeling that can come with Pisces, because if you're trying to get away from your problems, it is going to majorly like smack you, like harsh, because like I said, this is like one of the very few aspects we have in here that's trying to give you a little bit of softness with this moon. Everything else is trying to rip shit up. It's like, this isn't like, this moon is very powerful, but in the sense that, like, you're leaving what isn't serving you, and it's like throwing you into that, whether you want it or not. So, I mean, that's just the energy of the moon. That's not even how it's playing out in personal charts. This is just literally its own energy that this is what this moon wants to do. And, I mean... It's being nice enough to give us this little thing, like, make sure you love yourself and other people, but it's, like, even heightening more of the spiritual sense of this, because it's like, yes, we can be grounded in this energy and trying to understand these different aspects of ourself, but we're still being pulled into, like, this unknown energy that we're like, okay, we don't know what the heck's going to happen next. Sometimes it feels like our power is in other people's hands. More than likely, it could feel like while you're going through this that your power is in someone else's hands. And it could be causing a lot of tension, which is what this brings up. Like, you need to understand this. So, no random thing noise. 